an existential crisis and saying, I don't know. I don't know who I am. I don't know who I am. I don't know. <laughs> I just want to know what did I do to fuck up take one? Oh. I'm officially older. 32. I hate Drew is a piece of shit. I hate Drew. No, no, I'm joking. Today is the Monster Stack, it's day 1B, and your girl is ready. My favorite tournament of the series, 1500 Monster Stack, get all day to play. We just got very lucky there on the river. The gentleman next to me made a good fold, and I didn't have to show my hand, so I'm happy about that. It is still early, but we've upped our stack to about 65k from 50k. I lost half my stack very fast and then got it back, so now I'm like at starting stack basically. We are on break from this monster stack, and I was down to like 25k from 50k um, until literally the last three hands of the break. I'm not playing that great. I've made two bad calls. Um, I'm being a little bit impatient, so reevaluate this break, come back, hopefully spin it up. Uh, it did not last very long. I made some bad calls, got it in kind of late at the end there. Not really happy with how I played, but honestly, I, it was going to be tough to make it through the day. I feel like shit. Dinner break of the Monster Stack event, and I have just over starting stack. So we're on dinner break. I have 87K off of a 50K starting stack. It's a really long tournament, this. Well, everyone, it's not looking good. We busted the Monster Stack with about 30 minutes left in the day. So final update, we bagged 141, almost three starting stacks. We were patient. Didn't punt, let's go. Another bag, back to back bags for the Punter's Pad Challenge. We're feeling good and anything can happen in a day too. Coming back with 50 bigs. See if we can make some magic happen, baby. So we're on the first break in day two of the Monster Stack. We have a little bit more than we started the day with. It's a long structure, we're nearing the money, but so far so good. Says so GG, this one hurts. Uh, getting this close to a cash, this competition, uh, and bricking it uh, hurts, but get home, regroup, and back at it in a couple days. We're nearing the bubble. John Party's gone, so it's up to us. So, so yeah, we finally got a cash. We needed to to be catch up with everyone else. I'm glad we got the min cash. I'm happy. At the end, we were pretty short stacked, and uh, I folded around to the button, who raised to 24,000. We have pocket sevens in the small blind. We went all in for 145,000. The big blind folds, and the, the button thinks forever and calls. He has ace 10, normal flip. Um, on the flop is an ace, and then we didn't get to hit a seven, so we're done. It's just normal tournament stuff, I guess, and we grinded it out. We're short, I'm proud to have the cash. Disappointed a little, but more happy than that. The bubble was forever. Hey guys. How you doing today? Good. My name is Ryan DePaulo and I'm from New York City. My parents met at Studio 54, literally like the, like this cool club that I should be way cooler than I am. So I grew up in Manhattan. Um, I'm an only child. 
a little bit spoiled or got too much attention, I guess. I grew up an only child, really close with my mom because my dad was working nights. And then when I, I was 16, she died um, of like leukemia. I wish she could see me now. You know, I really wish she'd be here. But but Katie, my, my wife, says that every time I get lucky in a poker tournament, she's like, yo, that's your mom helping you. And then my dad, thank God that I have the relationship with him that I did. He. He and I got to know each other, really, and now I'm super close with him. He's going to be coming out here at some point in the summer. In New York City, there's um, public schools are good, but there are some that you can get accepted to. So you can audition for like instruments, visual art, acting, uh, or whatever. And it's much easier to get in for an instrument than acting. So for like three years in middle school before this audition to get into this like high school that's really good and prestigious or whatever, my mom had me in piano lessons and I hated it the entire time. For like three years, it was like, taking these lessons, I was like, mom, I hate this shit. And she was like, no, you just do it. And then you get into LaGuardia much easier then you can switch to acting. I was like, no, no, whatever. I'm going with the program. The night before the audition, we have a fight, like just some argument about some stupid crap. And so the day of, I didn't tell her and I just only auditioned for acting and not piano and just never told her and told her I did both. And then thank God I would have been dead. Thank God I got in for acting. Now I'm a world renowned actor. No, I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Punters, yes. it's challenge day. And today is everyone's favorite subject, including noodles. It's math. This is important and you want to listen up because the winner is going to get their room and bathroom cleaned by the loser. Oh. So the first person to get two answers correct Wait. is the winner. What in the fuck is this? Uh, Rob, would you like to guess? Seven. That is incorrect. Party, you have a question? No, I have an answer. Oh, what is it? Two. That's right. Yeah! Come on! Fire it up. Party. Three. Incorrect. Five. Five. Correct. Fucking Point shit! Point for Ryan. Go ahead and do it. Incorrect. Ebony? Eight. Correct. Point for now for Ebony, Party, and Ryan. Rob is still trying to figure out words. Go for it. Drew. Nine. Correct. Correct. Drew is on the board. John has on the Two. That is incorrect. Ryan? Ten. That is incorrect. Drew. Four point five. That is incorrect. Ebony. Did anybody answer? One? That's right. Okay. Well, wait, you don't need to say it so snooty, you had a minute. No, wait, did I didn't say the easy answer. I thought somebody already said two. I did, but then I changed it to ten. Like yeah, I thought somebody said one. That's right. Who said one? I thought somebody said one. I said one, but then I was like ten. All right, all right. All right, so after a vigorous math session where we realized a lot of us don't really know how to math, Ebony is officially the winner, which means she will be getting her room and bathroom cleaned by one of these crazy boys? Yeah, so, um, uh, yeah. Go ahead and place your votes now online, folks, because the person with the least amount of votes is gonna be scrubbing toilets. What is the World Series of Poker? The WSOP, um, even for a new player like myself, is it, it's it's the gala, it's the ball, it's the it's the big league, the big show, the main stage. I don't know. It's just like it's the a most amazing month of degenerate tournament, like like Christmas. World Series of Poker. It's one of the biggest events. Um, Everybody wants to win that price. It's really fun. It's when grown men act like little girls for jewelry. It's the best series of poker tournaments that any poker player can play. The World Series of Poker to me definitely means, you know, like Super Bowl of poker. Yeah, many tournaments, many opportunities, many formats. So it is the time of the year. The event for poker players, it is the whole reason 
we all do this. Uh, the WSOP means for me um, excitement. I'm happy to be here. I love the WSOP because there's no better place to river a bunch of people in the most frustrating game possible. Hi, I love the WSOP. It's amazing. WSOP is great, man. I like it. I love it. I love being here and love playing. I love the WSOP. We love the WSOP. No, yeah. I love the WSOP. It's the center stage of the poker world. It change your life and uh, it's really probably one of the few events out there that can can do it for you um so when I was like 20 I was living in this illegal house in Chinatown uh, like a 10 bedroom share, it was straight up illegal, it used to be a brothel. And there's this French kid, Sylvan, there who was playing on full tilt poker and I saw him one time and he was like, yeah, I can win $90 for this $3 entry. And I was like, oh my God. So I played a couple times on his account and he was like, make your own account. And then, and then started getting a little obsessed with it then. From there, it was just like kind of me just like dicking off, like not really playing. And then Black Friday happened and I kind of left it for a while. But then mostly the way that I've come back to it is like I've always been a casual, like recreational fan of poker, but not really playing often. And then when I started my YouTube channel, like I was just, knew I wanted to make a YouTube channel of some sort. And one video I made was me and my friends going to Atlantic City that did well. Hey guys, in this episode of, of whatever my dumb vlog, I'm going to Atlantic City with Joey to play in a poker tournament. And I realized there's a whole audience of gambling stuff and it's something I like to do a lot. And then after that, I was like, okay, I'm gonna make gambling videos. How do I not lose? 2020 during COVID when WSOP was like not live, I uh, was living in Manhattan um, in New York, but you could play online if you were physically just in New Jersey or Nevada, but it was like five miles away. So I was like, I don't wanna get a hotel and then come back when I could like run a really long wire and be able to play like stupid. So I drove over in a rental car and played in a parking lot and I ended up winning. It was just insane for $159,000, a $500 entry. And now I have a World Series of Poker bracelet. Oh my fucking God, bro. Oh my fucking God, bro. I'm a legend. Is this where champions are made? I guess so. I guess fucking so. Um, I, I want to say my motivation behind playing poker is like some high level like like battle and chess and some smart stuff. But honestly, I'm just a fucking degenerate and it's like the idea of a deep tournament run is so exciting. Um, part of it is like the, the, the mental game and the battles, but the motivation is just the fun of a deep tournament run. There's like nothing like it. My name is Ryan DePaulo. I'm an America's Card Room Team Pro. I really wish Drew didn't, Drew didn't lose. He's too nice. So, Twitter, you wanted me to be the loser. I see how it is. I'm going to remember that. I don't okay. like that. I don't want him to be the loser. <laughs> I actually feel, I feel guilty about this one. I got five lucky ones of these. Okay. Win us our money back, Clark. You know that Kino scene? Unfortunately, right. I don't. But I should. Oh my gosh, I man. should. Twitter, don't vote for Drew next time. Vote for DePaulo. What are you guys doing? All right, so we busted secondhand. We get pocket queens. We raise guy three bets, somebody four bet jams. We call. He has pocket tens, and then he just hits a four flush, four spades. Secondhand, not a good, not not the way you want to start. All right, GG's in the five hundred dollar freeze out. Break number two, and I'm off to a hot start. I have 75,000 from 25,000. Blinds are about to go to 1,200. So I just busted the $500 WSOP freeze out. I'm pretty sad, and I was like 15 minutes away from going to dinner with uh, Jeff, Money, and everyone else, but man, I'm just not even hungry now. We just busted the 500, uh, the WSOP 500. Like 75 away from the money, which is like really terrible. All right, we are on to day two. We bagged up 830k. We're coming back to big blind 30k. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. Only 250 people left between me and a bracelet. Let's do it. Day two of the 500 freeze outs. We bagged up seventh and chips. I think 250 left, something like that. It ends today. Final tables today. I look good. I feel good. We're gonna play 
Good, hopefully I run better than all of that. All right, unfortunately I just busted 130 in the 500 freeze out. Very simple hand, I had 800,000, big blind 50,000. Folds around to me on the button with ace queen off. I don't feel like shoving. I raise to 105,000. Small blind has like 1.5 million. He shoves, I call, he has king jack off. Spikes the king in the flop. On to the next one, 1500 super turbo today. As you guys know, the most prestigious of all WSOP events is coming up, the tag team event. And your fate is in my hands. We're bringing the money. We bagged for the Millie. 